I would like to very much thank Professor Bojo uh, for giving me uh, this great opportunity and it's great honor for me to talk here. Okay, so I would like to talk about the uh, uh, role of the non-central interaction and uh, mixing of different pictures in nuclear structure as a title. And you can please in interrupt me at any time. Yeah. <laughs> So the question is always welcome. So uh, as Professor Ojo explained, uh, I have moved to Osaka Metropolitan University. And what is it? Uh, I'd like to start with the thing. And, and in this April, the Osaka City University and the Prefecture University merged into Osaka Metropolitan yeah. University. So the, uh, this is a new organization. And this is different from Osaka University, but the size is almost the same. So we have now the two big uh, public universities, Osaka University and our university, Osaka Prefecture, uh, sorry, Osaka, Osaka Metropolitan University. And I was uh, at the Ukawa Institute of Theoretical Physics, Kyoto University until the end of March, but uh, now I have moved to new this organization and a half year passed after moving to this new place. Okay, so let us start the physics and uh, suppose that, that you were asked uh, why do you study nuclear structure, then uh, what, how you can answer to such question. Then uh, in my case, I would answer that uh, because uh, quantum mechanical mixing of different pictures is interesting and that is my answer. But I unfortunately never asked, so please ask me this question, so uh, I was never asked. But uh, uh, I would also add that the role. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Then uh, I also add that the role of uh, non central interactions are very characteristic. And uh, this is a uh, uh, second answer. And today I would like to talk about it because uh, these two are closely <laughs> related. And uh, we have cluster and show. That is one thing. And uh, we have uh, the contribution of non-central interactions in nuclear structure. And these two things are related. That's what I'd like to tell you today. Okay, so for that purpose, uh, I have to start with the nuclear-nuclear interaction from the beginning. And I'm afraid that uh, you all know the detail of the nuclear-nuclear interaction. So, but uh, I just uh, like to uh, remind you the very basic concept. And the nuclear nuclear interaction consists of the central and non central parts. And the central part is something like this. So, this V is a potential, uh, the inter uh, potential for the interacting two particles. And the point is that uh, this potential is just dependent on the relative distance R. So, this R is scalar. That's a definition of the central interaction. Of course, it can depend on the spin of interacting two particles or isospin. But the spatial part is just a function of this scalar R, relative distance. That's a central interaction. But there are non-central interactions. So non-central interactions are somehow different. And we have two kinds of non-central interaction. One is the vector for the spatial part and vector for the spin part. So totally, we have to have the Hamiltonian scalar. That is a requirement of the symmetry. So Hamiltonian is scalar, but the uh, spatial part can be vector, and the spin part can be vector. And that is spin orbit interaction. L is for the spatial part, which is vector. And uh, sigma is spin. This is also vector. And coupled to scalar. This is a scalar product. So this is spin orbit interaction. And uh, in atomic physics, this is called fine structure. Uh, this uh, spin orbit effect is called fine structure. But uh, in nuclear physics, it's interesting. It's not fine structure, but it has a robust effect. And that's uh, interesting. And there is another, one more non-central interaction. That is tensor. So this is uh, 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 actually rank two tensor for the spatial part to and rank two tensor for the spin part, and they couple to scalar, which has this kind of form. So now I mentioned uh, the 
rank of the tensor and what is it? And maybe you already know, but just for some case, I'd like to show you the, what is the rank of the tensor. And we are talking about the spherical tensor. And spherical tensor is related to the rotation of the operator. And suppose that you rotate this operator O in a space, three-dimensional space. And uh, this can be, after the rotation, this can be expanded using the family of this operator O. That is a situation we are now thinking about. And we need some coefficient A. And if this coefficients uh, A coefficients are the same as the one for the spherical harmonics. So spherical harmonics is can be a wave function, but it can be also an operator. So if we rotate the spherical harmonics as operator and get some coefficients, then what happened is that the, the, this coefficients uh, depends on the Z component of this spherical harmonics. And L doesn't change. L, after the rotation, L doesn't change. So it's, it's just a linear combination of different Z component. And if these co coefficients and, and, and uh, these coefficients for this operator or are the same, if these are the same, then this operator O is called uh, spherical tensor. So the the, that means that the, the, after the rotation, the, we get the coefficients, and the, if it is same as the spherical harmonics, then it's spherical tensor. The example is something like this. Spherical one tensor is x plus i y, or z, or x plus minus i y. And these are the rank one tensor, and these are the rank two tensors, and, and so on. OK, so the tensor interaction is something like this, one s one two. And this is actually the unique way, only way, to couple rank two tensor for the spatial part and rank two spin part to totally scalar. This is the only way. So that's why uh, it appears in a different, different place of the physics, different field of the physics. And maybe you learn that uh, if you have two magnets, dipoles, then the dipole-dipole interaction has this kind of form. And it's completely the same as the spin, uh, sorry, a tensor interaction we are talking about. Because this is the only way to couple rank two tensor to, and rank two tensor to rank zero scalar. Okay, so this is a nuclear interaction. I hope you already know. And let us move on to the nuclear structure. So what I'd like to tell you is that the nuclear structure is rich. We have different aspects of shell aspects and cluster aspects. And uh, Professor Bo Zhou is uh, a master of this uh, clustering. I know him for a long time. But uh, I would like to start with the shell aspects. And the uh, shell aspect is, uh, in short, it's a single particle motion of each nucleon. If you open a textbook, you already have, uh, know what shell structure oh. is. Sorry, no? And the, uh, the shell structure is that the, each nucleon performs an independent particle motion in one body potential. And a good uh, important point is that uh, in this shell model in nuclear structure, each nucleon has good J. J, 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 J is, uh, uh, what is J? J is a, a coupling of the orbital angular momentum and S. So it, it has good J. And uh, uh, this is because the spin orbit interaction plays an important role. Without the spin orbit interaction, uh, it doesn't have good J, actually. And it affects the magic number. So these are the levels of the uh, two dimension, uh, three, three dimensional harmonic oscillator levels. And uh, if you fill the nucleons in this potential, you get a magic number of two, eight, and 20 this way, but you never get the uh, magic number above 20. And we need the help of the spin orbit interaction to explain the magic numbers of 28 and 50 and 82 and 126. And for this magic number, uh, we have to borrow 
one orbit from the upper states. And that orbit becomes low line because of the spin orbit effects. So the, for the shell structure, JJ coupling shell model, uh, the spin orbit interaction is important. Okay, then nuclear structure can have different uh, aspect, which is cluster aspect. And Professor Bojo is a specialist, yeah, as we know. And uh, in short, what is cluster? A cluster is a kind of weakling, weakly interacting states of strongly bound subsystem. What does what does it mean? Uh, it means like this: the typical cluster is alpha cluster. The helium four is very strongly bound, and actually, this is coming from the tensor effect. We know. So, so, so that's why this can be considered as a subunit in the nuclear structure. And another important factor is that uh, if we, we have two helium four, the reactive interaction between two helium four is weak. So the uh, helium four is a kind of isolated and considered as subsystem, and that's the alpha cluster model. Okay, as I mentioned, the tensor interaction is very important. So for this kind of uh, uh, light nuclei, we can perform a, a kind of ab initio calculation using the real, realistic interaction. And we can perform 4 calculation uh, using the uh, realistic interaction. And what we know is that the uh, binding energy of helium-4 is 28 MeV, minus 28.3, but the tensor effect is minus 68 so uh, it's more than central interaction. So tens tensor interaction is the most important ingredient in explaining the strong binding of helium-4. So it's very interesting. So that is a, a result of the realistic calculation. So helium-4 is strongly bound due to tensor and considered as a subsystem. And uh, what is the most famous example of the cluster state? Maybe you know the uh, second zero plus state of carbon 12, so called oil state, is the uh, most ex uh, fam famous example of the uh, cluster state. And in the stars, uh, the carbon elements are synthesized from three alpha particles, and this second zero plus state is formed in this process as a resonance state. And Professor Bojo is a specialist of this state, I think. And without this state, carbon is not so much synthesized. So creatures like us, like we, uh, human beings don't appear if we don't have this second circle state of uh, carbon 12. So the clustering is really important for uh, human beings, yeah. So this is a, a most famous example of the cluster state. Okay, so now we learn that uh, for the shell aspect, pe uh, people, not people, but uh, nucleons uh, perform independent particle motion and the spin orbit interaction is needed. And for the cluster aspect, the strong binding of helium-4 is coming from the tensor. So the, because these non-central interactions are very strong in nuclear system, then we can have different pictures. We can paint different. Object is just one. So object is just a kind of a church or a building, but so we can draw some paint uh, different pictures because of the shell aspects or uh, uh, cluster aspects. And that's a point interesting. Okay, so that, that is a kind of conclusion. So I can finish my talk here, but uh, I still have time. So I would like to proceed to the main part of my uh, presentation. I still have 40 minutes. So uh, what I'd like to talk about is how to combine these two features of the nuclear structure, cluster side and shell model side. And there are two ways. One is to approach cluster side from the shell model side. That is one approach. Because a uh, shell model means that uh, each nucleon occupies some orbit, but uh, we can have many different configurations. 
So we can superpose many different states so that are determinants. And the functional space is in principle, uh, it's a complete set in principle. So uh, uh, eventually this kind of cluster state can be described if you prepare so many different configurations for, from Schembodel side and what the Schembodel people are doing. And this year, uh, this is actually a com big computational challenge. And this year, uh, Schembodel people published one article in Nature Communication and uh, I'm involved in this project and, and uh, the other people are a former Tokyo group. Uh, former means that they belong to University of Tokyo, but uh, now uh, they are belonging to different institutions. So the, the former Tokyo group, including myself, are uh, uh, doing the, the shell model approach to uh, describe the whole state, uh, cluster state. So this is the, the wave function. So today I'd like to focus on the ground state not whole state, but the ground state of carbon-12. So ground state of uh, uh, carbon-12 is, uh, according to the shear model, it has this kind of uh, density, very interesting. So you can see there are some remaining three alpha particles, but the alpha particles are slightly broken, melting. You can see this is a ground state of carbon-12, interesting. So this is the achievement of shell model calculation, but uh, they are using a kind of uh, uh, frontier uh, supercomputer, uh, very expensive one, of, of course. So this is a large calculation. Then what I would like to talk today is a uh, uh, second approach. Second approach is going to the shell model side from the cluster side. And this is much simpler. And you don't need, uh, of course, you can use a very big, uh, big supercomputer, but uh, uh, you, you don't need to uh, go from uh, cluster side to share model side. That I would like to talk about. Okay, so that's our approach. But I'm, this is my hope that eventually the two approaches uh, merge into one river. And that's my expectation. And get the same result. Uh, okay, so uh, now I would like to explain to you how to do that uh, from cluster model to share model. The first thing we have to do is that uh, take to take small distance between clusters. First of all, we have to do that to uh, go from uh, uh, cluster state, state to uh, cluster model to share model. So suppose we have three alpha particles and this is carbon 12. And the first step is to take small distance between them. Then it looks like shell model, right? It's a one body field, it, it seems to be. But this is actually not the end. What happens is that something like this. If we take the small distance between three alpha particles, what we get is the uh, state of lowest state of three dimensional Harman oscillator. And this is a result uh, because of the uh, unsymmetrization effect. Uh, four nucleons occupy the lowest S state and eight nucleons occupy the next P state if we take small distance between clusters, three alpha clusters. This is the result. Okay, but what we want is slightly different. Sli slightly different means that what we want is JJ coupling share model. JJ coupling share model means that each nucleon has good J and spin orbit interaction works. That's the thing we, we need. And in this case, this P state splits to P3 half and P1 half. And the eight nucleons occupies P3 half and form a closure configuration, subclosure of P3 half. That we want. So we need one more step. First step is takes a small distance, but uh, we need some transformation from the three dimensional Harman letter to the JJ coupling shell model. And when we need one more step, that's the uh, kind of message. So, uh, however, the traditional cluster model, 
traditional classical model gives this uh, left hand side. So uh, in the traditional classical models, the cluster structure is assumed. And uh, surprisingly, if you assume clusters, then no central interaction do not work. That is surprising a bit, because I said uh, uh, the origin of cluster structure, HIM4, is tensor interaction. But uh, if we assume the non central interaction do not work, and only the uh, central and Coulomb interaction are considered, I I'll explain it, why, why such thing happens. So uh, in this seminar, I will extend the traditional cluster model and include the spin orbit effect. And finally, I also include the tensor effect in the traditional cluster model. I, I have to extend the model. Okay, so why no central interaction do not contribute to the simple cluster? I, I would like to explain that. Suppose that, that there are two neutrons two neutrons with spin up and down, and they are forming a cluster. Then forming a cluster means that the spatial wave functions of spin up neutron and spin down neutrons are the same. The, that's the meaning of their uh, forming the cluster. So spatial wave functions of the two nucleons, neutrons, for instance, are the same. And uh, they are neutrons, so the isospin wave function of this one and this guy also the same. In this case, if you unsymmetrize the wave function, then you have to get a minus sign if you interchange, exchange the wave function. So then the spin part must be unsymmetric because the spatial part and isospin part are symmetric. So in this case, spin part must be unsymmetric in this way. So if the spin part is unsymmetric, then its spin is equal to zero. So di-neutron always has uh, spin zero and it's equal to zero. Then in this case, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't have the time to prove this, but there is some proof. So please uh, uh, believe in the existence of the proof that's a non-central interaction do not contribute to uh, this uh, di-neutron state. So for, for s equal to zero. So no non-central effect. Okay, so the uh, uh, non-central interaction do not contribute for simple traditional cluster. So we have to expand the model space and we have to open a kind of path to break it then if we extend the model space, then how the spin orbit interaction acts. If we break this cluster, open a path to, go, uh, to break this cluster, then spin orbit interaction induces a rotation of each nucleons to opposite side, if the spin orientation are opposite. So spin up and spin down are boosted to the opposite direction. That's a role of the spin orbit interaction, actually. If we allow the breaking, that is needed. Okay, so uh, what I would like to say is that uh, uh, we have to extend the uh, model space and uh, allow the contribution of the non-central interaction, then how we can do that? And that's our model. And our model is called unsymmetrized quasi-cluster model, HUCM. And this is the extension of the traditional cluster model. Uh, traditional cluster model is called the Brink model. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, Professor Brink uh, passed away recently, but uh, we would like to extend than uh, uh, this Brinks model. So uh, the single particle wave function has this kind of Gaussian form in, in the traditional cluster model for each nucleon. So R is a physical coordinate and this capital R is a parameter which characterizes the spatial log position of this particle. And chi here is a spin isospin part of the wave function. And what is a, a traditional cluster? The traditional cluster model means 
that that uh, four nucleons, four nucleons with different spin and different isospins, they four nucleons have the same value of this capital R. So they are placed four nucleons are placed in a common place. That's the definition of the traditional conventional cluster model, like a Brinks model. So in this case, spin becomes zero, as I mentioned. So there is no non-central force contribution. Okay, so we have to break it. How we can do it? Then spin orbit interaction is has this kind of form, L dot S. L is the R vector product with P. Okay, how we can include this effect using this type of wave function? So do, to just, just to see the feeding, let us calculate the expectation value of R and expectation R value of P using this wave function, just to see what happens. So uh, the expectation value of R is just this value because nucleon is ro localized around capital R. So expectation value of R is capital R. So what is the expectation value of P? You can calculate. And the expectation value of P is uh, actually the imaginary part of R. So if it, it doesn't have the imaginary part, it's zero. But uh, we would like to include this spin orbit effect. So we have to introduce the imaginary part. That's a message. And this spin orbit operator, R vector product with P, scalar product with S, is a, a scalar product of three vectors. So scalar product of three vectors can be, uh, uh, for the three uh, scalar product of three vectors, we can change the order. So this is equivalent to S spin operator, vector product with R position operator, scalar product with momentum P is equivalent. And this P is related to the imaginary part, as I mentioned, okay, imaginary part of the Gaussian center parameter R. So how we can give the imaginary part for this Gaussian center parameter? It should be the orientation of spin orientation vector product with the position. Then we can uh, have the uh, uh, imaginary part like this. So that is our transformation. So imaginary part P should be given as a vector product of spin orientation. This is a unit vector for the spin orientation. E spin, the unit vector of the spin orientation and the vector product with R, R is uh, capital R as a, so this is our transformation. Then what it means that it has an imaginary part and the lambda is control parameter. And uh, we can set the lambda equal to zero, then we can get the Brinks model, a traditional Brinks model. But uh, if we have finite lambda, then the imaginary part is dependent on the spin orientation. So spin up and spin down uh, nucleons are boosted to opposite direction because the imaginary part is a boost, uh, momentum. Uh, where, 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 this one. Imaginary part of R is just a momentum. So it's dependent on their spin orientation. So uh, alpha cluster is now changed into quasi clusters. That is our terminology. What is quasi cluster? Quasi cluster means that uh, uh, still four nucleons share the same Gaussian center R for the real part. But the imaginary part of Gaussian center parameter is spin orientation dependent. Okay, so I'll explain is a more easier way. And that suppose we have an alpha cluster. This is normal alpha cluster. So we have four nucleons sharing the same spatial wave function and proton spin up and neutron spin up and proton spin down and neutron spin down. So this is a situation in the Brinks model. So what we have done is that uh, we changed to quasi-cluster. Then Gaussian center parameter R is changed to R plus imaginary part and spin orientation vector product with R. And lambda is control parameter, which is shows a breaking in the imaginary 
part. So uh, then this is dependent on the spin orientation. So spin up nucleons and spin down nucleons, mm. and they're boosted mm. to the uh, opposite direction. So what happens? What happens is that, that they start rotating around the axis like this for spin up. Mm. And spin down, nucleons start to rotate around the axis, but the opposite rotation. So what happens is that uh, this uh, rotation induces uh, L value and the direction of L and S becomes parallel because spin up and spin down are rotating opposite ways. So the L dot S is parallel for spin up and it's also parallel for spin down neutrons. So that's a trick. So we can induce the rotation and get a spin orbit contribution. So that is a trick. Okay. So let us see the density. So uh, I start with the Brinks model, traditional cluster model. So L is a relative distance between clusters. And uh, this is the uh, density of the Brinks model, traditional cluster model with a uh, uh, equilateral shape, triangular shape, and the uh, distance is three centimeter like this. And the lambda is set to zero. This means that the traditional cluster model. And no breaking. So first we have to take the small distance limit, 0 0.051 pentometer, and lambda is still kept, kept to zero. And it looks like shear model-like state, but as I mentioned, this is a three-dimensional harmonic oscillator state because uh, it's not spherical. If you see the density projected on the XZ plane, it's something like this. But if we draw a density projected on the XY plane, it's something like this. This is the deformed state. And from this traditional uh, cluster model state, we introduce lambda parameter equal to one. Then the density projected on the XZ plane and density projected on the XY plane becomes identical. And what happened? What happened is that the left hand side, traditional uh, wave function, uh, traditional cluster model is something like this. Eight nucleons are in P, but this is not closure. But uh, uh, if we, we introduce a lambda parameter and change to JJ coupling shear model, then we can move these eight nucleons to P3 half, and this is a sub closure then the density, as, as we see, uh, in the case of lambda equal to one, the density is spherical. The density projected on the X plane and X Y plane becomes identical. The spherical carbon 12 is created. And we can prove that this is correct. What we are doing is correct transformation from the three dimensional harmonic oscillator wave function to the JJ coupling shell model wave function. And we can prove it. And uh, uh, to prove it, we introduce one operator, operator which is L dot S one body operator. This is very good measure of the clustering because uh, for the traditional Brink model, cluster model, this value is zero. So lambda equals zero is traditional cluster model and this operator is zero, one body operator is zero. And the summation is over all the nucleons. But uh, if we set the lambda equal to one, the, this value converts to four. And what, what is four? Four is a value that uh, eight nucleons are in P3 half. So P3 half means J is three half and L is one and S equal one half. In this case, this L dot S for one nucleon is 0 0.5. And eight nucleons are in P3 half. So uh, 0 0.5 times eight is four. So that's why it converges to four. So we can successfully transform the uh, three-dimensional harmonic state wave function to the JJ coupling shell model wave function in this way. So it's quite general that not only for carbon 12, but so we can use it for any, uh, any case. And the other message I would like to show is that a three-dimensional harmonic oscillator, uh, which is a, a traditional cluster model with small distance. And the JJ coupling shear model is quite different. 
And what we can see is the overlap from the initial state lambda equals state and the final state lambda equal to one. So overlap is initially one, but uh, this one decreases with increasing lambda and uh, lambda equals zero and one state has a squared overlap of uh, several percent, less than 10%. So the JJ Kaplan share model and the three dimensional harmonic data wave function are quite different. That's a message. Okay, so that's a, a basic message and I still have only, only have 20 minutes and uh, I'd like to talk about the application. So how we, I can manage to uh, <laughs> uh, show the exam examples. So one of the examples is of course carbon 12. Then the, this is the energy curves uh, as a function of the cluster cluster distance. <laughs> three alpha particles are now, uh, uh, the dotted line is a three alpha particle model, Brink model. And in our model, the three alpha particles are changed into quasi particle. And what are, what are these numbers? These numbers are optimal lambda. Lambda is a breaking uh, of the alpha clusters. And I said that the lambda equal to one is the limit of the JJ coupling share model. But uh, what is the best lambda value as a function of cluster cluster distance? So it's something like 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Inc it increases when the three alpha particle approaches but the best value is 0.2 or something like that. So that's what we found. So carbon 12 is still cluster state, I would say. It's slightly broken as we see in the density distribution of the shell model. It's three alpha particles are slightly broken, but still carbon 12 is three alpha. That's my impression. Okay, so that, that's the thing we can learn. And this difference is a spin orbit effect. Uh, the traditional three alpha cluster model don't have the spin orbit effect. Okay, yeah. the next, next example is uh, somehow related relate to the cancer treatment. So this is for Bolon 11. Uh, this year we have published one article on Bolon 11 and why this is related to the cancer treatment. Okay, I, I'd like to explain you. And the alpha particles emitted from the very highly excited state of carbon 12, much above foil state. It's something like 20 MeV excitation can be used for the cancer treatment. And how this uh, uh, state is created, we use boron 11. So boron 11 is injected it, to our body close to the cancer cell and uh, a proton beam is bombarded on the uh, boron target. Then this is called proton boron capture therapy. And if the proton is captured by the boron 11, then it becomes carbon 12. But uh, this threshold energy of boron 11 plus proton is very high. So it's almost like 20 MeV region. Then the, this carbon 12 emits three alpha particles and these three alpha particles uh, destroy the cancer cell. And that's a trick. And now people are trying to apply this method. But uh, so experimentalists already measure the cross, cross section. So it's okay. They already have the cross section. But what we'd like to say is that uh, whether boron 11 is cluster state or not. Because boron 11, if the boron 11 is really shell model-like state, even after uh, capturing proton, it doesn't emit alpha particles. So we need some seeds of the clustering. The remaining kind of uh, uh, persistence of the clustering in boron 11 ground state, that we would like to calculate. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't emit three alpha particles after capturing proton. Okay, so we calculated boron 11 in this way. And uh, we uh, mixed uh, many different configurations. So one is a cluster model, two alpha plus triton by cluster model wave function. And the next one is our HUCM and uh, two alpha plus uh, three uh, uh, nuclear model. 
and uh, the energy is something like this, and these are theoretical ones, and these are experiment, and these dots are threshold energies of alpha plus alpha plus triton. So if we see from the uh, thresholds, then the agreement is not so bad. And we focus on the, this ground state. So ground state is a linear combination of many, many different states, but so we can calculate the squared overlap between the ground state solved uh, solution, ground state solution and uh, each basis state. So these are the kind of contribution of each basis state. And this part is cluster basis states. And this part is our HQC and basis states. And this one is two alpha plus three nuclear basis states. So our, uh, this uh, bunch of uh, states is alpha alpha distance of one centimeter and triton is somewhere. somewhere. And this one is, uh, is alpha alpha distance is two centimeter and three centimeter, four centimeter and five centimeter. So the highest, most important basis state in the cluster uh, basis states is something like half a distance of three centimeter. And it has a squared overlap with the solved solution of the ground state by 70%. But our AQCM is better basis states. This one is lambda equals 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. And this lambda equals 0 0.2 and the squared, squared overlap with the ground state by 80%. So AQCM is a best, better basis than cluster in this way. And the uh, uh, alpha alpha distance of three centimeter and, and the alpha clusters are slightly broken. Lambda equals zero point is most important. But the point is a slightly broken, but the cluster states also con contribute very much. The overlap is something like 70%. So I would say that the in boron 12, uh, sorry, 11, the cluster st structure remains. It's slightly broken, but still remains. And that's our conclusion. OK, I have still have 14 minutes. And uh, I would like to show you one more example. And so uh, we can now have the JJ coupling shear model wave function very easily. So traditional cluster models so far were something like alpha cluster or ocean 16 cluster or calcium 40 cluster. These were the traditional clusters and these are corresponding to the uh, closure of the three dimensional Hamann constellator and no spin orbit effect. That was a traditional cluster model. But now we can create JJ coupling shear model wave function very easily. So we can start a new cluster model. New means that uh, we can have the plural, not a single, multi uh, JJ coupling shear model wave function. And JJ coupling shear model wave function can be subsystems. So for instance, we can replace alpha cluster with helmate. Helmate is a neutron rich uh, nucleus. And uh, which has six neutrons, but uh, this six is a subclosure, just like carbon twelve. The neutron number is the same as carbon twelve, so it's a subclosure of p three half in the shell model. So we can prepare the shell model uh, helmus eight and three helmus eight nuclei. And <laughs> unfortunately, this is not a, a realistic nucleus because carbon twenty four is out of the uh, drip line, so it's not bound. So, but uh, in some day we can do this kind of experiment, I think. So uh, what is surprising is that uh, if we prepared three helium-8 nuclei, the relative distance is very large, more than three centimeters, very surprising. And energy goes up very rapidly. So this zero is a threshold energy to decay into three helium-8. So, so the relative distance is, is very large. What happens? So we found new mechanism for clustering due to spin orbit. This is very strange because uh, now in Japan is now 1148. So, so I'm talking about the breaking of a cluster due to spin orbit for 45 minutes. But now I would like to mention that the spin orbit interaction enhances the clustering in this case, because 
now we prepare prepare the cluster which is a subclosure configuration of p3 half so each in each cluster spin orbit interaction work attractively so if we calculate the spin orbit energy it becomes three times the contribution of each helm eight at large distance here. So if they are separated, then it becomes three times the spin orbit contribution in one hair made. But so this is disturbed when they closer. They occupy some strange orbit. That's why they want to be free hair made. So the spin orbit interaction favors the clustering for the first time in, in, in my personal history. It always breaks the alpha cluster, but uh, for the first time, it uh, favors the clustering. So this is a new mechanism that we published uh, two years ago. So uh, HELM8 want to be a kind of free HELM8 due to the spin orbit. Okay, so then the next example is carbon-14 and the carbon-14 also can be a, a new cluster because uh, uh, it, now the uh, nu nuclear number of six is for proton. So Z equal to six instead, not, not say N, but Z equal to six and N equal to eight, which is the closure of P one half. And this is also can be prepared very easily using our model. So uh, we can have two or three uh, carbon-14. And uh, okay, so I skip why carbon-14 can be cluster and there are multiple reasons, but uh, the time is limited. So I skip this part and go to the energy curves and carbon-14 plus carbon-14 have this kind of energy curve and carbon-12 plus carbon-12 has this kind of energy curve. So for carbon-14 plus carbon-14, has a large distance between them, four centimeter or so, compared to carbon-12 plus carbon-12. And what is the reason? The reason is quite simple. The reason is that uh, in the case of carbon-12 plus carbon-12, plus carbon in this case, if the relative distance gets closer, then it goes to the ground state of magnesium 24. So it's overlap with the ground state. But uh, in the case of carbon 14 plus carbon 14, even if it gets closer, it doesn't go to the uh, ground state of magnesium 28. Now magnesium 28 ground state has different configuration, which cannot be described by this carbon 14, carbon 14 cluster. Then they have the uh, large distance between them. That is a difference of carbon-12 plus carbon-12 and carbon-14 plus carbon-14. And we published this article two years ago, and at that time, uh, Anatoly Afanashev, who, who is a mean field uh, theoretician, was uh, at the uh, Yukawa Institute, Kyoto University. So we wrote an uh, uh, article together, and this is what he got uh, using cranked uh, RMF uh, mean field calculation. And uh, this is our IQCM result. And this is a, a, not a ground state, but a slightly excited state of magnesium 28, and we, we get a similar state. So this is a kind of new application. So now the JJ coupling shear model wave function can be used as cluster. We can prepare two or three carbon-14 and so on. And this is a kind of new cluster. Okay, so uh, using the last uh, ah, seven minutes, uh, I thought that I have 10 minutes, but so seven minutes, okay. Uh, then I'd like to talk about a uh, uh, different thing. So the question is cluster, whether the clustering is general. So uh, uh, it has been believed that the cluster structure appears mainly in light nuclei. Many people believe it. But we know that many heavy nuclei alpha decay, which is very difficult to be described within the shell model. So the, if we expand the model space of shell model, it, this is uh, rather challenging. But uh, in reality, these uh, yellow color nuclei alpha decay. So many heavy nuclei alpha decay. So the alpha cluster component should be mixed in uh, the heavy nuclei the ground set of heavy nuclei. So how general is the clustering? That's the question. And cluster and shell competition, this is also important in medium heavy and heavy nuclei. And that's uh, my question, yeah? So uh, 
today, I just show you, uh, I have only five minutes left, so uh, six minutes. So I just uh, only discuss uh, this titanium-44 as an example of medium heavy nuclei. Okay, so titanium-44 is important nucleus for the observation of the supernova explosion. This is a kind of a symbolic nucleus of the supernova explosion and mainly produced via calcium-40 plus helium 4 reaction. So this titanium-44 must have this kind of cluster structure, otherwise it's very difficult to be synthesized. So this is the energy levels of titanium-44, and which has a positive parity band and negative parity band. And this, uh, actually the, the presence of these two bands are uh, supporting evidence that it has a kind of asymmetric structure. If we, we have asymmetric structure and project the parity to positive or negative, we can get a positive band, a rotational band and negative parity band. And uh, this is called the inversion doublet structure. So, so the observation support the presence of this kind of asymmetric structure. And by the way, this negative parity band is uh, measured in our town. Not our university, but uh, at Osaka University, our St. Pete, they measured this uh, negative parity band and uh, established this picture. That's okay. That's okay, but uh, what it's very uh, big problem these days is this one. This one is uh, not 44, but uh, titanium 48, but uh, uh, this is a result of alpha knockout reaction. Alpha knockout reaction means that the proton is in injected and uh, we observe the proton and alpha. So al alpha particles are knocked out from titanium. And uh, these are the uh, observation. And uh, if we assume clustering, alpha plus calcium 44 cluster structure, if you assume by hand with a relative distance of 4.5 centimeter, then we can uh, reproduce the experimental data like this, it's okay. But uh, if we extend, expand the model space and allow the breaking of clusters, then this is the, this is written mean field, but actually this is unsymmetric molecular dynamics calculation. So MD calculation is this one. So our, the result is two order of magnitude difference. So it, it doesn't contain the alpha component. Th then this alpha knockout is underestimated because it doesn't contain alpha structure. So this is really a problem. Sorry, how many? Uh, three minutes, okay. So uh, we can use our AQCM to this problem. And uh, this dotted line is a cluster model calculation assuming calcium 40 plus uh, alpha. And uh, if we use our HUCM where the alpha cluster can be broken due to the spin orbit, then it comes something like this at the horizontal axis, the distance between calcium 40 plus alpha, then alpha cluster start breaking in our HUCM at the inner region and completely broken. So the cluster and HUCM are different at the inner region. This is the situation. Then, what is missing is the tensor effect. What we forgot is the tensor effect. The tensor is the real origin why alpha cluster is, is strongly bound. So we, uh, I don't have the time to explain it, but we invented a method to include the uh, uh, tensor contribution in the cluster model. And the result is that it's something like this. The, the model to include the tensor effect in the cluster model favors clustering with the, the distance of five centimeter or so. So why such thing happens? The thing is that uh, if we include tensor inside uh, helium-4, then this helium-4 induces a two particle, two hole excitation. And that is a tensor effect, but uh, this two particle, two hole excitation is blocked when this helium-4 approaches uh, carbon, uh, calcium-40. So the helium-4 wants to be free uh, helium-4, apart from the, uh, this uh, calcium-40 core. So the tensor interaction 
kind of enhances the relative distance between calcium 40 and helium 4. So actually, these are real, really the same scale. So in, in the inside region, the spin orbit interaction works, and in the outer region, tensor, this the tensor clustering is enhanced, and these two play an important role in titanium 44. But the clustering is also important. So the title of this article is uh, Role of Tensor Interactions as Salvation. So in the medium heavy nuclei, the cluster structure survives. And the tensor is the salvation of the cluster structure. So that's what I'd like to talk about. And uh, this mechanism could be general. And that could be the reason why the uh, heavy nuclear alpha decays. OK, so now uh, 12 o'clock in Japan time and 11 in Chinese time, I think. So I'd like to uh, conclude. And uh, uh, so I talked about the non-central interaction, and they play an uh, important role in nuclear systems. And the uh, spin-orbit interaction, rank one non-central interaction, is uh, this is crucial in explaining the magic number of the Shaw model. And the strong binding of heaven four is owing to the tensor interaction. This is rank two. Uh, non-central interaction. And this is the origin of the cluster model. But in the uh, traditional cluster model, uh, these non-central interaction cannot be uh, treated. But uh, now we can transform the cluster model to shell model and discuss the competition of this by our HUCM model. And what I have shown that we can start a new cluster model that the JJ coupling shell model Wave function can be a cluster. So we can prepare plural uh, JJ coupling shell model wave function, and they can be a new clusters. And the tensor interaction could be the salvation of the clustering in medium heavy nuclei. And the clustering is not limited to very light nuclei, but uh, uh, it, it exists also in the heavy, uh, medium heavy or heavy nuclei. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and uh, I welcome your questions or criticism or whatever. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for the Itakaki-san's very nice talk. So next is a question time. So if you have questions, please raise your hand in Zoom. Yeah, maybe first uh, let me ask you one question about uh, uh, your new model. Uh, actually, you introduced the lambda. Ah, uh, lambda parameter, yes. Yeah, lambda parameter. So in that case, uh, for example, if we want to treat the di-neutron case, di case, so uh, the oh, lambda yeah. introduced, uh, and then you can consider the spin orbit interaction. Yes. So for the ground state, also for, for example, for the helium-8, for the ground state, for the ground state, in this case, uh, how well you can describe the ground state? Because uh, you, you, you assume the cluster, actually, but, but, but you introduce lambda to describe the spin orbit. Yes. I mean, the, the degree of freedom uh, reduced a lot, for example, in helium-8. So if I really consider, for example, alpha plus four neutron, ah, okay. and to, to describe that, how much difference? So oh, that's... a very good question, yeah. Uh, so sorry, that uh, this is uh, just, just a subclosure configuration of uh, uh, P3 half. So, so maybe you are worrying about uh, uh, hello like structure of heaven, right? Uh, is, is that what you're worrying? Uh, Concerning about yeah, yeah. halo of course that is, uh, but why even for the ground states I also want to know the, the, the difference. Um, maybe not so much different for the ground states. Uh, 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 ground state of a helmet, uh, is that what you're talking to, talking about? Uh, is that for, the, for example for the helium eight? If I uh, only for the uh, helium eight case, if yeah. I um, describe using alpha plus uh, four new four neutrons. 
Four neutrons. That is yeah. Five, uh, five clusters, very heavy. And, uh, right. and now you assume the uh, alpha plus the neutron, the neutron, but you break, you something break the, the neutron and mm. you consider the spin orbit interaction. Yes. So I, I want to know how much difference in some oh. sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, but uh, I don't have the number, but uh, yeah, just my guess, but maybe eight per 80% or so is uh, correct, right? <laughs> so what we have done is, uh, the, as you had mentioned, uh, uh, we uh, have, uh, sorry, which figure is correct? Uh, something like this, uh, two of them are, uh, two protons are in S1 half and uh, 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 and the two neutrons are in S and uh, four neutron, uh, uh, neutrons are in P3 half. That, 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 that's a situation in our, in our model. So, so uh, but, uh, uh, okay. Uh, of course, uh, if you are interested in helium-8 itself, then we should, uh, uh, the, it, it must be the intermediate state between plus and shell, I would say. But uh, in my case, uh, I prepared uh, three helium-8. Uh, so in this case, helium-8 is a kind of uh, uh, assumed to be a shell model state. But uh, if you are interested in helium-8 itself, then we can tune the parameters. We have two parameters, uh, distance and breaking. So if you're interested in the helium-8 itself, the, we should not use a shell model limit, but uh, we, we have to optimize the parameters. Is that- Okay, uh, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Okay. Uh, ah, so please, uh, Tulaf, please. Okay. Hi, it's uh, Gaki-san. Nice oh. to see you. Ah, oh, oh, hello, okay. hello. Very nice talk. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I also oh, have a question. Me, right? uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a question also related to this uh, parameter lambda. Mm -hmm. This is the crucial part in your model. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems that you use this lambda as a free parameter, right? Yes. And you change this lambda yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, you are looking for some uh, energy minimum then. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, yes. You uh, use this lambda. Yes. For carbon 12. 12 I like this, yeah. On two, right? oh, yeah. And my question, uh, not question, I, uh, from this curve, you can see that uh, uh, it seems that uh, this curve is very flat. So uh, ah, yeah. mm. uh, this is for carbon 12. And you also have, uh, yeah. you also have uh, calculated for boron 11. Mm. Do you yes. use uh, the same parameter or do you? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Okay, okay, okay. Uh, in the uh, boron 11 calculation, this uh, lambda is a generator coordinate. We have a, mm -hmm. a kind of a two generator coordinates, lengths and uh, breaking. So uh, mm -hmm. in, in this figure, lambda is just uh, set to one parameter, one value. Mm -hmm. But uh, this can be generator coordinate. So we can mix different lambda state and diagonal as a Hamiltonian. That, that, that can be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. And okay. uh, yes, but uh, your point is very interesting uh, that, that, that uh, the energy becomes flat. So both shell state and uh, cluster state uh, both contribute to the ground mm -hmm. state of carbon-12. Yeah. So, uh, and the uh, cluster state is slightly broken due to this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. And very nice to see you. Yeah, yeah very nice to see you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so any questions? Oh, please. Uh, hi, I have a naive question. I'm from different field. Yeah. Can you uh, give me a simple picture to help me understand why uh, the non-central interaction uh, hype the nuclear structure to uh, uh, cluster, uh, to clustering? Why? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, it's already uh, in your title. You, uh, you you try to tell me the role of the non-central uh, interaction. So in your talk, you show me the non-central interaction favor the uh, clustering 
So, could you help me understand why? Uh, why? Uh, uh, why uh, clustering is favored? Uh, is it, uh, uh, sorry, yes. uh, 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 in which nucleus, uh, for, for instance? In, uh, like you uh, show three uh, high eight cluster, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some kids, uh, uh, carbon 24, to show me uh, three, ah, ah, uh, three, uh, three here, man. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I understood your question. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, you are talking about this one, right? No? Three. Uh, yes. yes. Is it okay? Yes. yes. Oh, ah, okay. Okay. So this is a very, uh, this is a very new. And uh, actually, I didn't know this kind of thing happens. Clustering is favored by spin-orbit interaction, and that's the opposite thing. And the, the reason is that uh, spin-orbit interaction uh, favors each helium, helium A to be a free helium A. So uh, in free helium A, uh, in my this simple picture, it's a closure of P3 half for the neutron. So uh, uh, the spin orbit interaction acts attractively inside uh, the helium three. So if we separate these three uh, helium eights, then the spin orbit, this is a spin orbit energy, is just three times uh, spin orbit energy of each helium eight. That's the situation. But uh, if the, they get closer, so we unsymmetrize, then the, some something strange, strange thing happens that uh, uh, some particle hole excitation occurs. Then the, uh, the spin orbit interaction is uh, not optimal for these he three helium uh, uh, eight nuclei. So that is an unsymmetrization effect. So the helium eight want to be a uh, free helium eight and in each helium eight, the spin orbit interaction act at, at, attractively because it's subclosure. So it's very strange thing happens uh, when we uh, prepare JJ coupling shear model wave function as a cluster. Sorry, is that uh, uh, answering to your question or, or something else? Sorry, the co connection is not so perfect. So, uh, so maybe I missed oh, your point. It, but is it okay? Or? Uh, it's okay. Uh, so, uh... Uh, in the beginning, you also mentioned like uh, so. Uh, this is the second question from you. From, okay. Uh, so okay. Uh, in the beginning, you mentioned like uh, the uh, spherical tensor. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, it's oh. very important. So, but uh, uh, at the end, I couldn't find uh, what are your uh spherical tensor and what's the role of the uh spherical tensor in your work uh spherical tensor yes uh, 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 uh you mean the uh uh sorry <laughs> i have yeah. to uh, so you uh, define like a, at this point yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay some uh, tensor uh, can be the spherical tensor. Uh, they okay. can be rank one or rank two. Yeah. So in your work, uh, what is your uh, spherical tensor in your work? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I'm asking, uh, what is your O, the, uh, the capital O? Uh, oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Uh, what is this O? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, oh, yes. This uh, definition. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I just would like to say that. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Now I understood your question. So, uh, 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 okay. So for for instance, uh, these, these are the rank two spherical tensor x plus i y square or z z. Uh, these are some kind of examples of the uh, rank two tensors. And these are the example of one tensor. So if you rotate, then you get some coefficients, but they are the same as 
the uh, one for the spherical harmonics. That's a, a definition of, of the spherical tensor. So th these are rank two tensors. And you have to couple this rank two tensor for the spatial part. And you have to also construct the rank two for the spin part and couple to rank zero. Then, then after that, you get this form. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, is that, a, uh, is that answering? Uh, so in your, uh, spec uh, specifically in your work, and uh, what, what's the, uh, the sphere of cancer in your work? The, uh -huh. the, like the, in your work, and uh, what's your the tensor? The tensor in your work? I'm asking. Uh -huh. The special. Okay, could you uh, point out what is your uh, stroke tensor in your, uh, in your in your work? Hmm? So, so sorry, I, I I could not get the point. <laughs> so, sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, uh, just try to understand your work. So in your uh, work, uh, it seems you only consider like the, the orbital spin interaction. Uh -huh. The lambda, you, you have the, uh, the, uh, the type of lambda. So uh -huh. you don't have the... Okay, the okay, 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 okay. Now I understood your point. So uh, for, for okay. uh, include the... Uh, I skipped this explanation, sorry. So to include this uh, tensor, we need a different model. Actually, I skipped all, all about that. So that, that might, might, might be the confusion. I, I only talk, uh, talked about how to include the spin orbit effect, the rank one tensor, but I, I skipped everything about how to incorporate uh, this rank two tensor. Uh, but we need a different, another model for this purpose. And that part is skipped due to the limitation of oh. time. So we, yes, we need a different model. Yeah. Sorry, that part was skipped. Okay. <laughs> I can do your paper um, to find uh, the master. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next, uh, uh, step one, please. Uh. Hey. Hello. Ah, hello. <laughs> Sorry, I missed some from. Hi, Itakai san. This is uh, Itakai san. This is Zhang from Peking yeah. University. So, uh, thank you for <laughs> the talk. Yeah. So, I'm an experimentalist and uh, I'm doing also cluster physics. I am quite interested in your discussions related to the uh, coexistence of uh, uh, cluster and uh, shear model configurations and mm -hmm. the same systems. So. Uh, from the perspective of theorists, so is there some way to make quantitative, let's say, mm -hmm. more quantitative discussion about this kind of a coexistence? Oh, very, yeah, yeah. Actually, I moved here to Osaka and now working on that. And today, today I don't, uh, now we have submitted one article and soon you will see it. And uh, how con quantitatively, uh, your question is how quantitatively distinguish yeah. these two, right? Yeah. Actually, it influences the uh, uh, wave function. So, what we are doing is something like this: cluster model wave function and shear model wave function. We can both we can prepare, and uh, both are prepared to reproduce the charge radius, observe the charge radius. But uh, they give a different. Uh, value for the uh, if we perform uh, proton scattering, then the angular distribution are different. One thing, or form factors are different. So uh, we can prepare the uh, both uh, cluster model wave function and shear model wave function using the same model, and both reproduces the rate charge radius, but uh, mm. there appears difference. Mm. One difference is, is uh, reaction uh, if we perform the uh, proton scattering then the uh, angular distribution are different. And uh, we, so we can really say which model is closer to experiment. And that's why I started uh, after coming to this new place uh, in Osaka. And uh, I have my colleague, a young colleague uh, called Horiuchi san and who is a uh, specialist of field body and reaction and, and so on. So he liked my model and we started the collaboration. So soon you will see such kind of quantitative discussion. And uh, uh, we also calculated for carbon 12. And uh, 
to reproduce a re reaction, proton scattering, so and uh, and so and such things, the cluster model is closer to, uh, compared to pure JJ coupling shear model, and we can also compare the uh, electron scattering form factor and so on. So we can quantitatively discuss the uh, competition of these two, and also we calculated for titanium forty four, and the cluster model is closer to their uh, observation. So. Uh, Sorry, today I don't have that, but uh, uh, maybe in one month or two months, uh, we can show you some uh, quantitative discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very interested in your new paper. I will, I will, I will wait for the uh, paper. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for nice comments. Yeah. Okay, so uh, any questions? So uh, maybe I think it's almost the time. So uh, at the last, thanks. Uh, it's a great sound, nice talk, and uh, hope to see you soon. Oh, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, re really soon. Oh, yeah. So. Yes, I hope. Yes. And congratulations for moving to a nice position for you, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay, so maybe they, we, we can finish. Right. Okay. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank yes. You.